We are here at the compound in San Diego, California. This is my home base gym. I'm here with my boy Reginald, and we are about to do a big bench press workout. He's gonna have to do a workout that I'm prescribing today, so we're gonna see if he can hang. I'm pretty sure he can. We're gonna have to see about that though. All right, Chris, walk me through it. All right, we're about to do some block bench press today. Oh. You just felt that monster, huh? Hell yeah, bro. So the reason we do block press is because there's a less stress reflex. So we like to take a little pressure off the shoulders to kind of work on that second half of the bench press. So that eccentric phase obviously is where the muscle gets broken down and that's where you gain size. But we want to shorten the range of motion so we can work a little bit on that lockout because partial part about people having bench press problems is that they don't know how to engage their lats in the bottom part to that second phase where the triceps and the chest lock out. So this kind of gives us a little isolation so we can kind of worry about how are we uh, engaging our lats properly in the eccentric and how are we using them to press off the chest. And then we can do a lot heavier weights like this. So it's kind of like an ego lifting too. You can do a lot more than you can on regular bench press. The best thing to always remember though, that if you're thinking a lot, all you have to do is relax your anus. I can already tell pretty quickly that this really does help for the lat engagement because I'm not so yeah. worried about getting to the bottom of my chest. Exactly. I'm really worried about getting that nice tight scapular retraction exactly. and holding the lats. Well, the problem, so the biggest problem with bench press, once you get down to this, like where this three block is, is that we tend to internally rotate. So like when that shoulder comes down right here, and then if we don't have enough uh, flexibility with our shoulder, that internally rotates, our elbow drifts back. Mm. You want that elbow underneath your wrist. You want it stacked. You want them right here so that when you're pressing, it's almost like you're pressing with a punch. If my elbow is drifted back like this, the first thing that I'm gonna engage is my front delts to press out. And so my front delts and my rear delts will engage. So if I'm not in my lats, you're putting a lot of pressure on your rotator. Cuff. Got you. So we have to focus on that lat being tight. Got you. So a good rule of thumb too is like when you're trying to engage your lats, to think about trying to brush your, uh, or cover up your armpits, so brushing your tricep with your lats. And that causes that, comp that compact uh, lat. Okay, say less. Say less. So I'll show you like a little drill right now. It's a hey. good rule of thumb. So, grab my hand. Look in my eyes. <laughs> so, if I'm pulling like this, feel my lat? Yeah. Feel it? So there's no activation right there. The second I, oh, you feel that? Oh, wow. So the second Wait, I pull on. right here, so pull up, pull up high. There's nothing, no lat, it's nothing. all rear delt. So now pull down. So now that activation's there, right? Oh, man. So that, that's just a little rule. I never knew that. Yeah. So that's why we always be a 45 degree angle where our uh, elbows are. Tricks to the trade. We learning, man, we learning. We out here learning. This is the crazy thing about bench press. Because of gravity, you could come down in any which way and then not have the right purpose in your bench press. So I could come down, just let it drop down, and then I'm, there's no tightness in my last, and now I'm hindering my, my bench press. But then that's why you have to actively know how to do it, because then now it changes the whole motion now. You know what I mean? Same thing as your squats, as opposed to like letting you just drop down into your squat, opposed to you pulling yourself down in your squat. Mm -hmm. Two completely different things. Shout out to my boy Mondo. Let's get this Fedia. Time to collect. Let's get it. Let's get it. Good. The biggest thing is just trying to spread the workout between all the bigger muscle groups. Yeah. I don't want to overload my chest. I don't want to overload my triceps, none of that shit. I want to spread that workout. Mm. That's when you really mature as a strength athlete. It's when you realize that everything is a full body lift. Bench press, my legs are engaged just like they would be in my squats and my deadlifts, right? It's crazy, I've been lifting for four, four and a half years. Yeah. I just picked up leg drive on bench last year. Crazy, life changing. The more you know. Here's a little tip for leg drive. When setting up your legs on how you're doing your leg drive, where your knee is tracking is super important. A lot of times you see guys try to point their legs or point their toes out and their knee caves. So if you see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera angle, but when my toe is pointing is not where my knee is pointing. 
That's making, that shows me, whenever I have an athlete that does that, that he's not engaging his glutes the proper way. So you always want that knee to track exactly where that, that toe is. That's how you know that you have proper leg drive or proper glute engagement. Another way to learn how to get your, uh, to engage your last two is you have somebody grab the top of the barbell and have you pull down. That'll force you to engage your last. Really? Does it make sense? All right, let's give it a shot. All right. So I'll give you resistance on the way down. You pull it down and then you just punch up. Yep. Good. Gotcha. See the difference? Yeah. So it's then weird. Now, that's how I know my right is stronger because I felt my right pulling all yeah, of yeah, yeah. So now I gotta learn how to, how do you balance? How do you learn how to balance out? So it all comes down just basically just how you study your film. Yeah. So if I would see any type of weakness in the lats, I can see it by just basically how they're tilting a little bit and it usually comes from the feet. So usually if, if there's any type of uh, imbalance in the upper body, it's because of the way the feet are positioned. Oh really? One leg, it might be sucked back a little bit more than the other leg. So it's caused you to tilt and that's what causes the, the imperfections in your pressing. So that's how I look at it. I don't ever look at the problem as it being just a problem. There's something else that causes that problem, mm. especially when you're pressing, when you're squatting. So every time people say on their squats, like, oh, my hips are kicking back or like um, something wrong with your squat, your chest is dropping, whatever. That all starts from the initial hinge of the hip. If you don't hinge properly, then you're obviously not going to be balancing your feet. Your hips are going to kick back, chest is going to drop. So we always look at that as connected to, the, to a different source. You know what I mean? Got you. You got to find the root cause. Exactly. What do you want, three? Yeah. <laughs> they built you yeah. differently, brother. Yeah. They built you differently. No, I got it. You know what's hard about three plates? Nothing. <laughs> the imbalance that you have in your bench press when you're talking about your left flat, it's because your left foot is pulled back too much, your right foot is pulled forward. So that's causing your shoulder, your right elbow to drift in and then your other one to drift out. So you don't feel any activation because the elbow's not even in the right place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so then, show, me, show me what that setup looks like incorrectly and then show me what it looks like when you do it right. So you, when you watch the video, you'll be able to see that the barbell actually turns like this because your elbow's sucking in. So if I were to look at your bench press, it would it looked like this. So starting off with feet placement. So, so, so my right foot was? Your, right, your left foot is back more than your right foot. And so when you're pressing, it's causing you to drift your elbow like that. So you're pressing, you're actually using a lot more right lat than you are left lat. Ah. So that's why it causes that turning in your bench press like that. It, it, also, it, it all originates from the feet because your base isn't, isn't equal, right? That's all the stability of the shoulders comes from is from how, how my feet actually set up. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna work on the foot placement first. Not gonna move the feet. Better. Yeah, you're right. You felt it? You're right. Yep. I feel it. Crazy. I'm cured. Crazy. I'm cured, yo. <laughs> this is insane, man. This is crazy. What, it's like I do this for a living or something? Yeah, I know, facts. <laughs> it's almost like you know what you're talking about. What the fuck? So weird. Why are you always talking about mental health? Start talking about bench press. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need mental health as long as we got a good yeah. bench. I don't care what my mind says if I can have a good bench press. There's nobody with a 315 bench and pain in their heart. It doesn't exactly. go together. I'll go to 65. And I... Oh, let's get to the money. All right, so this is an extra le expert level tip on your leg drive. So when you do your setup on your back, the only, the only part of your top of your back should be on the bench press, so that's where your traps are. So what you want to do is have your chest at a decline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hips up when I pick the bar off. And instead of just dropping my hips straight down, I'm just gonna drive my knees out and that's gonna naturally put my hips down without decreasing that angle of my chest. So see if I'm right here, I have my legs equal, put the top of my back on, and then I'm gonna raise my hips up. So you see how my hips are up right now? When I pick it up, all I do is drive my knees out and it naturally puts my hips down. All right, so I get a lot of questions about should I have my feet flat or should I be on the balls of my feet or should I be on my toes? So it's important to know the different 
structures of why people do that. So if I'm putting my feet flat, it's gonna hinder me in my retraction and how I'm declining my chest, but I'm gonna have way more stability in my bench pressing. So it's gonna keep my feet flat and then usually with a wider base, that'll make sure that there's no tipping of your bench press, but then you are sacrificing the angle of what your chest is at. When people pull their feet back with the balls of their feet, they're trying to angle their chest a little bit more and get a little more leg drive. So, so you just have to know which type of bench presser are you. It's the same thing as if, are you a closer bench press? Do you like to use the power bench press or do you like to use the range of motion bench press with a wider bench press? Those all just depend on what your body type is. Do you have longer arms? Do you have shorter arms? Do you have a barrel chest? Those are the things that matter. So if you're putting your feet flat, you just have to know how to push back into the bench press, put your body at a decline, and you will have a much more stable bench press. A lot of big benchers have those. So they like to keep their feet flat. So like the 600, 700, 800 pound bench presses are usually flat footed. Uh, when you start pulling your feet back, that's when the retraction happens at a bigger rate, so the range of motion drops down a lot. And so are you a range of motion bench presser or are you a power bench presser? That's what you have to ask yourself. This is push-ups. The reason why we want to do this, it increases the range of motion for what you're doing as a push-up. So we're going to put weight on our backs, get a stretch reflex, so it's actually going to gauge the chest at a higher rate, and it's going to break it down at a higher rate as well. So we're going to go hands on two platforms. This is around like three to four inches. So we actually want to get our chest all the way to the floor. So that's going to cause a stretch reflex. It's almost like doing a deficit deadlifts. So you're getting a bigger range of motion, so your body will have to work a lot harder at it. Now we gotta do it with weight. Oh, good heavens. This is how you get a big booty chest. Call it a hood check. There you go, get that big stretch at the bottom. Good. So every set we put a little bit more weight on, a little bit more weight on. And what we're gonna do on the last set, Reggie doesn't know yet, so he's behind the camera, he's about to figure out right now. We're gonna work up to a top set around six to eight reps, whether it be three, 45, going back to four, 45, and then we're drop setting out every plate. So we're gonna do as many reps as possible with that plate. He's looking at me like I'm crazy behind the camera. <laughs> we? We, we, motherfucker. We. Oh, you speak French now? Yes, we, we. That's my we, we. <laughs> so we're gonna go heaviest we can, six to eight reps, drop set, one plate off, AMRAP, drop plate off, AMRAP, drop plate off, AMRAP, body weight, AMRAP. That will be our top set. Six, six sets of those. No, I'm <laughs> My dude. Living in paradise. Yeah. This is how you build world record holders. This is how you break world record yeah. holders. <laughs> this is like the Tom Platt's way of doing shit. Yeah, fast. Just fucking hardcore Branch Warren type shit. This is the shit that I've been doing since I was like 12 years old. This is like uh, when you gotta bring up the groceries and you don't wanna bring them up separately. You all bring right. them up all in one. Your fingers are all fucked up at the end. Come on. You got it. Good. Get your ass up. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. That was a little heavier than I anticipated, so I'll probably just go three plates. Okay. I don't know if I can do three. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a fucking shot. This got one's for you, on mama. You. This one's what for you. Where the big girls at? Where the big girls at? God. Yeah, buddy, get your money. Come on, motherfucker. God. Get your fatty up. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Reg. <laughs> Reginald, what's your middle name? Cunningham? Garrett. Garrett. <laughs> He's a Cunningham. <laughs> Reginald Cunningham? Hey, Garrett's not much better. Hey, no, I, still sound like, I still sound like an English scholar. <laughs> an English scholar? <laughs> oh, God. Imagine if your name was Reginald Cunningham. <laughs> I'm glad it's not. <laughs> Guys, this is a hell of a workout. This is it right here. Yeah, this is actually how I work out almost every single day. So, so when I get hurt, it's like, man, it comes with a territory. But if you want to break down your muscle groups and really get become a monster, you have to push yourself to failure. You have to do it. There's no option but to do that. Or you're wasting your fucking time. That's what I've ever done in my life. So my mentor was my head strength conditioning coach at San Diego State. And then, so he went on to be the, the head strength coach for the New York Giants for like 10 years. I think he's the best strength coach in the world. So that's who I learned under. When, we, when I was a sophomore, they were trying to make everybody quit the football team because they were trying to rebuild the whole program. And so this is a workout that he used to break every single person. So what we would do, is that we would go on the pull-up bar and then we all had to put weight on no matter what like even if you were a fat guy couldn't do pull-ups someone would be there to help you up so you would do uh six to eight reps pull-ups with weight so i would do them with uh 345s on a belt 
which I can't do that anymore, but I could in college. So you would do a max effort AMRAP of that. And then once you're done AMRAPing that pull-ups, get six to eight reps. And if you can't get six to eight reps, someone helps you get six to eight reps. So you're forced into that rep. You immediately take the weight off, go down, and then you put three to four plates on your back and max effort push-ups. You do a drop set, four plates, three plates, two plates, one plate to body weight, AMRAP. You get zero rest, you're back up on the pull-up bar. Back up on the pull-up bar for, and then you would drop the weight. So if I did three plates on the pull-ups, I go to two plates now, six to eight reps. And I would do that to failure. Someone pick me up, try to get me up to all those reps. Once I'm done with that, back into the push-ups. Same thing, drop a plate, go three plates, AMRAP, AMRAP, AMRAP. And then you go for a third time without any rest. So this, these three sets, each one would take at least like seven to eight minutes total. And so you had to do everything back to back to back to back with absolutely no rest. I've never seen grown men cry the way that this workout has made them cry. So if you want to try that shit, I caution you, but you'll become a fucking monster because of it. But we ain't doing that shit today. No, the fuck we're not. <laughs> Come on. One more. Good, take one. Boom. Come on. Three more. One, two, three. Good. Come on. All right, figure out how to get it off yourself. I was playing. <laughs> Come on, take it. Oh, shit. Yep, let's get it. Come on. See, this is why I think you hate yourself, because you do these types of workouts. I don't understand. Come on, get some money. Nope. That's how you push yourself. You want growth? Create the stimulus. All right, guys, much easier way to do this. <laughs> All right, let's go home. <laughs> Steroids. Let's talk about it. I love you, mama. I might not see you again after this set. All right, go ahead. Good? Fuck it. No, I'm not good. <laughs> that's a little low. All right, let's get it. That's you a want to go higher? Yeah, that's a little low. Right there? Good? That's a little low. If I die, I want to die. All right, let's go. A little higher? Let go. That's it, let go. There you go. That's a little too high. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. One more, one more. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's keep rolling. Let's go. Pull that one? Yep. Yeah. Let's go, that's where the money's made. Ah! Pull that one? Yep. Alright, let's get some. Yeah, buddy. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, shit, guys. This ain't for the week. And I'm the week. Oh. Okay, so Chris said I can make the next workout, and it's gonna be a brisk walk to the car. <laughs> <laughs> so we did two compound lifts. So now we can go do some accessories, some lighter accessories. This is where you do your bodybuilding stuff at. Some flies, you wanna do some chest press machines. That's where we do all this stuff now. So we do incline. You actually get a bigger stretch for your, uh, for your chest on this. So, cause of the angle, it allows you to open up a little bit more. When you're flatter, there's a lot more shoulders involved too. So you're able to pull your shoulders back, get your lats spread, and then stretch the chest out a little bit more. Is that more of that top end chest? So you are like right here? Yep. You want it like down right here. Okay. So then that causes more stretch right here. Got it. Because that's what you want. And then when you, you, you finish, you almost think about like finishing with your pinkies, touching each other. Okay. Got it. So that has that little, that, it finishes the flex for it. Okay. Right? I'm just trying to be good at hugging. <laughs> well, this is not the workout to be maxing out weight with. Yeah. Since you're in a compromised position with your hands out wider, you are at such a higher risk of injury. That I've seen so many guys tear their packs on flies. So always err on the side of going too light with a concentration on your range of motion and your technique, opposed to you trying to add up too much weight on this. I'm the, I'm the biggest advocate of putting weight on the barbell, lifting heavy that way. Don't do it when in terms of isolation. That's where you get hurt at. So guys, comment below which exercise you feel like you took the most value from. For me personally, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was that block bench press. For me, that lat retraction has always been a big issue for me. And it's mainly 
felt for me in my shoulders. I always feel that pain in the shoulders. And when he showed me that, I don't know if it's because that second half of the movement we're not really doing so much. But what I can tell you is on that top half, I didn't feel as much of the shoulder uh, tension, which is probably a good thing. That means I'm utilizing the chest, utilizing the lat. Exactly. It's a real positive. Yeah. So that's also a cue for everyone that has long arms. It's so much harder to engage your lats when you have such long arms. So your technique has to be sound when you're doing it. So it's good to have eyes on you at all times. So if you're not recording your sets, have one of your boys watch you, try to critique you, have the right information, because uh, it's really hard to find it without it. So on these rows, you want to position your hip, hip crease on the edge of this bench, and then you want to lean forward. Hand placement up, so I call that uh, supine. Hand up facing the ceiling, and you want to pull through your lap but keep your chest down. So it should just feel like a pure activation in your lats. Big stretch. Come on, Chris, start that lawnmower. Yeah, buddy. You know, my first business was I actually mowed grass when I was nine years old. Bro, same here. Really? I had a lawn route. Ah, uh, that's why I fuck with I you, bro. Man, this saxophone's getting it from you right now. <laughs> All right, let me show y'all how this is really done. Jesus Christ, how much fucking weight is on it? <laughs> All right, so what do I do? Good. Oh, yeah, baby. I feel it. This is the number one trainer two right here. Just touch the muscle you want to engage. So I have my girl touch my butt cheeks when I'm doing hip thrusts. <laughs> oh my how do you like Lord. those shoes? These shoes? I love my them. sister no got bulls. me those shoes for Christmas. Those are fucking awesome. We're cutting that out until y'all give our sponsorship dollars. Hell yeah. We don't get sponsorship is, dollars. No we ain't putting that in there. No bull. Sponsor us. I feel like I'm doing like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> hell yeah. This one's for you, boys. Damn, this lighting's making me look like a monster right now, huh? Must be nice. Must be Must nice. Be nice. <laughs> this is so I can get food to my mouth quicker. Yeah, yeah buddy.